What's up everybody, Ace Enigma here. Uh, I know it's a little darker here, but I'm trying to get the spooky atmosphere going. Also, I really have bad lighting, so eh. I noticed that my uh, reaction videos have been doing a little bit okay, I guess. They've been getting some views, eh, comments, good stuff. Mainly friends, but glad you guys are watching. Glad you guys are enjoying this, hopefully. I found this other channel, because I didn't want to keep doing just nuke videos. Uh, this channel, I believe, is called Goose Boost. So if you guys know it, uh, that's awesome. Why didn't you tell me about this? I had to find it on my own. They, he's done some creepy stuff, and uh, I've been watching a few of his videos, the longer ones that are too long to react to, and uh, I really like his personality. But he does some 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 interesting series called uh, Trauma Trauma Talk, Tra 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 Trauma Trauma Marathon. I guess that's how you say it. And uh, this one in particular is about Courage the Cowardly Dog. So if anyone that's watching my age or older. Definitely grew up watching stuff like Curves of Curly Dog, and I love that show. So I'm curious to know what, what it's about. It's about 10 minutes. So let's get into it. I'm psyched. Also, I switched up the lights in the back. Now that's now one's red and this one's blue instead of the other way around. I really like this, this intro. Stranger Things vibe for sure. Curse the Cowardly Dog was a mystifying little show because it somehow balanced humor with horror. And not to say that the entire show is like some horror fest that nobody could ever watch. Of course, it has a few creepy That's, moments, but that it's not actually stupidly scary, right? That scared me as a kid, no lie. Fuck that. Maybe not to an adult, but to us kids, <laughs> we were terrified of some of the things here. And I yes. saw a lot of you recommend several aspects of the show. And it was really hard to narrow down some experiences that you had and myself and see which one really was the scariest moment. I don't think I remember that one. Instead of competing against every single one, I would rather go through just a few moments that actually impacted us. Eustace as kids, was an asshole. The ones that were really, really terrifying. Starting off with a real popular one. I fucking the knew they were gonna mention that one. What? Return the slab or suffer my curse. Yeah, See, no. this is scary on multiple levels. Not only <laughs> is the voice and the repeating return the slab very haunting, but it's also the way he's animated. They made him very much surreal. They made his look, the way he moves, yeah. very unnerving. And it works out in this episode's advantage. But of course, there are some pretty humorous moments, including oh, the mummy. Shit. Especially that one part where he's like, Oh, come on. I always thought that was hilarious, and that really broke the mold for me. I, I didn't think he was scary after that. Regardless, to many of us, he was, was horrifying. And it, it, we really avoided that episode whenever possible. But no episode was more avoided by me personally than this one that featured this horrifying looking dude that was just... That is so... That is bad. Now you're just being mean to kids. Essentially what the episode was They're about was that kids, Eustace yeah. had to grow some crops, whereas he claimed that he had a green thumb. In reality, he didn't grow anything. This angers the spirit of the Harvest Moon for disrespecting his land and, and not growing any crops for the harvest. This causes him to appear and it, it is that's, it is so... I, words really can't describe how horrifying this creature is. Like They were really trying to make kids shit their pants. This was mean. This was cruel. This was horrifying. Not only that, but his voice was also pretty bad. What with the whispery <laughs> way that he talked. Though I'll be honest, rewatching the episode, he's pretty silly. <laughs> he, he doesn't really say anything ominous. He doesn't really have a foreboding uh, air about him. Like, he does have a spell that he casts upon them all that basically makes them all melt and in this horrible heat. But honestly, he's really kind of silly. <laughs> He also makes a very brief appearance as opposed to the mummy that was uh, asking for his slab back. But speaking of brief appearances and very effective ones at that, this thing. Damn, Courage has been through some shit. Oh my god. You're not perfect. 
I really can't explain what it is, <laughs> and I can't explain either what makes it so terrifying. I honestly forgot but about But I remember that. as a kid that it was that, the single yeah. most horrifying thing wow. I saw in a kid's cartoon. That is it really that was. Is, that's, that's, that's no exaggeration. Wow, I, don't I even, actually remember having a nightmare featuring him like three nights in a row wow. ever since I saw him. Now, there's nothing about him that's really too scary. There, Like, if you were to talk character design 101, he's really not the top charts of, like, spookiness, but it's just the way he whispers out. It's this haunting message that will always be with you. You are not you perfect. You will never be perfect. And maybe I'm exaggerating with the way I am interpreting the monster. Oh, it is bad. a kid's cartoon after all, but this is something that affects you for a lifetime. And that monster, that thing, that dream, that nightmare that tells you that you are not perfect. Man. It is the one thing that always reminds you. Why would you put that humanity. in a kid's show? Your imperfection, your everything. And, and there's just so much about it that is just so awesome, honestly. As scary as he is, it is amazing how effective his appearance is. Also, shout out to this guy for introducing me to psychological horror. <laughs> but diving deeper into the aspects of different kinds of horror, there is that episode that featured this masked character who, spoiler alert, we find out is related to this other character who is known as Bunny. Bunny is in an abusive relationship with this dog that pretty much is just as bad as it sounds. While the show is still for kids, Someday. they definitely try <laughs> their best to emulate what an abusive relationship is for children. And wow. it is graphic in a sense, yeah, it's, especially it's some, if you're a part of this kind of relationship. Some heavy stuff for kids. By this kind of stuff, you will see how this will affect you. And it's not horror in the aspect that, okay, she's wearing a scary mask, sure. But it's more horror in the sense that this is just real people. I mean, they're animals, sure, but this is just how it happens. This is life. Sometimes people are abusive and they can't leave. They can't escape from the reality that they are stuck in. But thankfully, they do escape, and it's a happy ending. It is kind of a shame, though, that they couldn't actually, yeah, 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 you know, know be a couple like at the end. They have to be best friends forever at the end. I know that if it were made today, they would actually be a couple that would totally kiss on TV. But hey, you know what? You get what you get. And finally, one that I personally don't find scary, but you guys seem to find scary, is the episode with of Freaky course. Fred. Do you know how close I was to saying Freddy Freaker? I was seriously about to call him Freddy Freaker. So Freaky Stupid. Fred is a freaky barber who does freaky uh, things yes. with hair. Oh, <laughs> or rather, the removal of hair. Now, this isn't really too scary to me, but I do understand that for some people I made. I really like that it was very, I never found it creepy as a kid. I actually had a lot of friends when I was a little boy that really hated this episode because it scared the crap out of them. But for me, I, I thought it was very whimsical. I thought it was very charming if not fetishistic i mean that's what this entire episode is it's just one dude talking about how his fetish just took over his entire life <laughs> and how he has done horrible fetishistic things to other people for the sake of his own pleasure it is very uncomfortable when you understand that connotation as an adult but as a kid i i, I thought it was like oh this is a really cool like dr seuss episode i love episodes that just like rhyme and limericks it's it's just awesome it's i think that's nice, the reason why like, i enjoyed it too. now i watch it and there is definitely some underlying sexual themes with everything or maybe you disagree but <laughs> i think understanding that part of it thinking of it as like his fetish being uh, the thing that takes over his life that is scarier to me than just Freaky Fred having a freaky design. I, I think for the fucking that answer. is the thing that truly makes him horrifying. Also, while I'm at it, uh, a huge shout out to the Freaky Fred reanimated collaboration that was just made. It is amazing. It is completely well done. And it has just a bunch of incredibly talented artists under that the hood. Cool. And it is fantastic. I Just have not it. seen I, that. I can't, I can't like, celebrate it enough. It, it is wonderful. 
Curse the Cowardly Dog will forever be cemented in our minds as that one freaky show that we loved. But not just because of the fact that it was horror. Sure, for many of us, it introduced us to the world of horror and how we can uh, explore that even further. But for many of us, it was a charming little show. It was more than just Tom and Jerry-esque antics or screaming faces, screaming courage. It was more than that. Sometimes it was a touching show that had an incredible lesson to, to teach. And it was also one of those shows that could make you feel Nani? more than just fear. What the it could fuck? make you feel happy. It could make you laugh. And it could just make you feel really good inside. Yeah. Curse, Curse Carly Dog was definitely a great show. It was one of my favorite ones as a kid. It was one of my favorite ones now. To be honest, if, if you type it on YouTube and type live stream after, after Courage the Cowardly Dog, you can find like five hour, five hour long videos of like Courage the Cowardly Dog. And like, I still put it on like as background stuff when I'm cleaning or whatever, because it's still, it's, it's still good. It still holds up. Um, I wish he would have mentioned some other ones. Like I loved uh, the character Cats, the guy that was, I had like spiders. He, he made multiple appearances, I believe. Um, I also loved all the comedic characters, like the the stereotypical Asian guy. He's like, "Watch where you going, you fool!" And the doctor, he's like, "There's, no, there's nothing I can do." When when he was like, he was useless as doctor. And and the music, man, there was so much good music too. Like off the top of my head, like right now, I'm thinking about that episode where like they go to the future and like bananas took over the whole world. It's, it's bizarre. It's it's such a good show. And uh, this guy's got a few more videos like this. I know he has one for Invader Zim, I believe. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. And uh, I'll see if I can react to it. I'll put the link for his channel and this video in the description. Uh, if you guys want to check him out, he's got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, so glad, glad. If you guys are watching to the end, I'm glad. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for watching. And uh, see you in the next one. What? More macaroni. It's Dr. Osman!